can't do reactors. Pressurized vessel, heavy water. What on earth are these reactors? Hey there, it's Elina, your friendly nuclear physicist. And today we are discussing about can do reactors. We're gonna be splitting this video into the following six categories. What is a can-do reactor? Economics, safety, security, can-do reactors beyond Canada, and can-do versus light water reactors. Without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off by defining the abbreviation can-do, it stands for Canadian Deuterium Uranium Reactor, and uh, it has a major similarity and a major difference compared to the typical light water reactors that are used in Europe and uh, USA. Not just USA in Europe or around the world. Uh, these are the fact that it's a pressurized vessel, similarly to the light water reactors. However, the moderator and coolant of the Kandu reactors is heavy water. And we're gonna get into what that means in a while. The principle of operation of a Kandu reactor is very similar to a typical light water reactor, meaning that we have a nuclear fuel fissioning inside the core where neutrons are hitting the uranium, fission is happening, the atoms are split, energy is released, Water is turned into steam. The steam turns steam turbines that then go and uh, produce electricity. However, as I mentioned, the main difference of the Kandu reactors is the fact that they use heavy water for their coolant and their moderator. Heavy water is basically similar to regular water with the difference that instead of hydrogen, there is deuterium, which is basically a proton and a neutron forming an atom together and makes it heavier and denser than regular water. Hence, that's why it's called heavy water, deuterium water or deuterium oxide has a higher density and uh, it is better moderator than the regular water. The natural abundance of deuterium in water is around 156 over a million hydrogen atoms, making a concentration around 0.015%, which is quite low. So typically heavy water that is used for Cantu reactors is not only occurring naturally since its concentration is so low, but it's actually produced from regular water, either by electrolysis or a chemical exchange of hydrogen into deuterium atom. These processes are cost effective and produce high purity heavy water, which is necessary for the operation of Kandu reactors and for efficient moderation of neutrons. So moving on to the economics aspect of this type of reactor, and here we have several advantages and disadvantages. And already disadvantage was mentioned in the previous section is the fact that Kandu reactors require heavy water meaning that, first of all, it is more complex to produce it instead of using regular water. And second of all, the production itself is costly and adds to the total cost of uh, the operation of the reactor and hence the electricity price. However, you might ask if it is more expensive, then why use heavy water at all? Why not use regular water than like in light water reactors? Heavy water has an advantage, and this is the reason why it was chosen by the Canadian authorities is the fact that since it is a better moderator, meaning it slows down neutrons more efficiently than light water does, means causing more fissions, it can actually be used with natural uranium. Meaning that in Kandu reactor types, the fuel doesn't necessarily need to be enriched. It can be used in its natural form, as in uranium-238, which is not efficient to be used in light water reactors and would not have a sustainable fission chain reaction if it was to be used in those type of reactors. Hence, even though we do add a cost and a complexity factor by employing heavy water, we also reduce cost and complexity by the fact that enrichment in uranium fuel is not necessary. Another major advantage of uh, Kandu reactors and uh, their design is the fact that they can be refueled while still in operation. They have quite a different design from uh, the typical light water reactors and the fuel rods are basically horizontal instead of the usual vertical uh, that we have seen in pictures in the past. And that allows the fuel rods to be removed individually and replaced with new fuel rods while the reactor is still under operation, reducing drastically the downtime, so the time that the reactor needs to be shut down, refueled, checked and went back into operation meaning that the cost of um, the electricity production, the cost of the maintenance itself is much lower and it is much more efficient process to do so. However, by having this advantage of uh, online refueling of the reactor adds to the complexity of the design itself of the Kandu reactors, which of course might enhance the cost of constructing the reactor itself. But as we said, while in operation, the online refueling 
is a very good advantage uh, on the cost of the electricity price itself. Moving on to our next aspect, and we are going to discuss safety. Safety is a major issue in all nuclear reactor types, and uh, Kandu is no exception. So regarding to the safety aspect of the Kandu reactor, here it is important to mention that Kandu, since it's using heavy water, is actually safer in this aspect because heavy water is less reactive than regular water is, meaning that it is less likely to cause a meltdown or even a chemical uh, reaction between uh, the coolant moderator and any other part of the reaction, uh, the reactor in case of an accident. Additionally, Kandu reactors, similar to light water reactors, use a pressurized system, meaning that the coolant is uh, under high pressure for it to prevent boiling, which is a good safety feature that the reactor has and is also better in order to contain the radioactive material to not be released into the environment in case of an accident. Regarding the online refueling of the Kandu reactors and uh, here, a loss of coolant accident or else called lockup might occur while the fuel rods are being removed from the reactor, the coolant actually might leak out in case of an accident and radioactive material might be released into the environment. However, there is a lot of safety features in place to actually account for that and uh, the possibility of uh, such an accident occurring while the refueling is ongoing inside the reactor is very low. Moving on to the next uh, aspect that we're going to discuss and this is safety. Here, Kandu reactors have uh, several advantages over light water reactors and uh, one of them is the fact that uh, they can use a wide variety of fuel in order to uh, operate and produce electricity. This, for example, means that uh, instead of natural uranium, which we already explained these advantages of enriched uranium, they can also use uh, fuel that comes out of light water reactors and being reprocessed. So basically, they can also use spent nuclear fuel coming out from light water reactors. So this makes Kandu reactors less dependent on a single fuel source and less vulnerable to supply disruptions in case fuel is not able to be delivered or enrichment is not uh, possible in the countries that uh, do enrichment of uranium. Additionally, Kandu reactors do not produce weapons-grade plutonium like light water reactors do, which makes them less interesting for proliferation uh, issues and concerns. How they do that is the fact that they use deuterium water actually aids in that because deuterium water, besides being a, let's say, better uh, moderator, it uh, actually has the ability to also absorb more neutrons than the regular water does, meaning that it leaves less neutrons for the fission products to be turned into plutonium, hence less plutonium is produced inside the reactor, inside the fuel. And additionally, Kandu reactors operate at lower temperatures than light water reactors, which is an advantage, again, over producing less plutonium inside the vessel. So moving on to the most interesting aspect, in my opinion, is uh, why aren't Kandu reactors then used around the world if they have uh, such advantages that we already discussed in the previous uh, points? So Kandu reactors were developed in uh, Canada, hence their name. And uh, the expertise for the Kandu reactors in Canada is very advanced because people there have been working with these reactors for decades. They have been building them. They know exactly their problems, how to fix them. And uh, they're very good at doing that. Hence, they are not, let's say, so interested in other types of reactors. And uh, they are very interested, however, in selling this technology in other countries. It might come as a surprise, but Kandu reactors do exist in other parts of the world as well. For example, Romania has purchased two Kandu reactor types, so has Argentina and China. Other uh, countries have also tried to use the technology, such as India, Pakistan, South Korea. However, they have never actually built a Kandu reactor. So these countries, even though they have Kandu reactors, they don't seem to be doing very well with them. And um, that stems from the fact that the expertise are much lower in um, Europe and Asia. Uh, when it comes to Kandu designs compared to light water reactors. Therefore, they are not really so popular uh, when it comes to being, let's say, built and delivered around the world as they are very popular in Canada. That is the main reason why the Kandu reactors are, let's say, kind of limited to the borders of Canada. However, they are very widely used within the country. And uh, as we already mentioned, the expertise and the knowledge that the Canadian authorities, nuclear authorities have over this design is superior. 
then one might ask why develop a CAN2 reactor design in the first place and not use a light water reactor even in Canada? So it is interesting to point out that CAN2 reactors are basically chosen in Canada because of the Canada's natural resources. So Canada is abundant in natural uranium, which is exactly the fuel that they use for their reactor types, as well as quite high in abundance of uh, heavy water. Therefore, it is perfect for them to design a reactor type that actually uses both of their natural resources. That is why the design is quite popular in Canada, but, but might not be so attractive in other parts of the world that don't share the same abundance in natural resources as Canada does. So moving on to the last point, and that is, so which one is better? Which one should we choose? Which one is cheaper? Is it can do or is it light water reactors? So here, of course, the price and the economics, which is the major reason to basically build a reactor design, is really depends on the location where the reactor is going to be built, the size of the reactor, as we already mentioned, the resources of uh, the country that will host the reactor itself. However, there are several advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to sum them up here. The CAN2 reactor type has uh, several advantages over light water reactors, and that is the fact that it uses natural uranium as a fuel, which reduces the cost of enrichment, simplifies the process of uh, basically producing fuel for the reactor, as well as it can use various fuel uh, types, as well as fuel that is being basically used in other reactor types, making it even more flexible and uh, potentially reducing the cost in the future if such technologies develop and are actually of uh, interest. And the last advantage of the Kandu reactor is the fact that it's being, as we said, refueled online. It reduces the cost of the downtime, uh, let's say maintenance and uh, any kind of cost associated with uh, the refueling process that happens in light water reactors while the reactor is not in operation. However, there is also several disadvantages with uh, the Kandu reactor type, and the major one is the fact that it does use heavy water, which is harder to produce, is costly compared to regular water that's used in light water reactors. Kandu reactors offer advantages, but however, they have a disadvantage of a complexity in their design, which is higher than, a, uh, let's say, design of a light water reactor, introducing a cost and uh, perhaps an even uh, larger time to be built. And lastly, uh, Kandu reactors have a smaller market share than light water reactors, making their cost higher for uh, R&D, developing, constructing, licensing, etc. It is worth mentioning that the cost of electricity produced from Kandu reactors versus light water reactors very much depend, as we already said, on the location that the reactor is going to be built, the size of the reactor, the uh, resources of the country itself, and all the different choices that the basically companies are going to make while designing and constructing this uh, reactor type. And it is important to mention that both uh, reactor types are very good and can be very cost efficient for the countries that are going to use them. It is important to choose the reactor type that best suits the country, the resources and the economic basically availability that uh, the company has to, let's say, give out in order to build such a reactor type that they are going to choose. Therefore, Neither one is better or worse than the other, but it very much depends on the technical skill, knowledge, resource availabilities, and economics of the country that is going to choose the type of the reactor to be built. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What is your favorite reactor type and why you have chosen that reactor type in particular? Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. It's been Elena, your friendly nuclear physicist, and until next time, see you soon.